We have what we would call hot reservoir, hot, ob hot object, a cold object. They are physically, connection, uh, physically connected with a path, uh, a copper bar that has a cross-sectional area of 200 square centimeters. Uh, let's say that the length of this bar is 80 centimeters, so 0.8 meters, uh, so that the distance between the hot and the cold object are, is 80 centimeters. And let's assume that we ignore any radiation effects. The, um, the conductivity constant for copper is uh, 397 joules per second per meter per degree centigrade or per centigrade degree. And what we're trying to find is the amount of heat transferred across that interface, the dQdt. And the equation for the dQdt, dQdt, that just simply means the amount of heat transfer per unit time, per unit time typically is per second, is equal to K, the conductivity constant. The greater the conductivity constant, the greater the propensity for the material to conduct heat. So the bigger K, the more heat will transfer. The cross-sectional area, the more, the bigger the path is, of course, the better the heat will transfer. And the difference in the temperature between the hot and the cold reservoir. The bigger the difference, the faster heat will travel uh, down that path and then we have to divide that by the length because the longer the path the less heat will transfer so a little path will transfer much quicker a longer path the ends the the heat will travel a lot slower and there's a, a good reason for that because think about it if the path is very short and the temperature on the hot side is over here and on the cold side is over there we have what we call a very steep temperature gradient. The temperature difference across that interface changes very quickly, with, which would cause a lot more heat to transfer. If the path is much longer, like so, and we have the temperature like this on one side and like this on the other side, you can see that the temperature gradient is much more gradual and therefore a lot less heat will transfer from the hot to the cold. So again, this would be hot, this is cold, this is hot, this is cold. So you can see visually here that the longer the path, the slower the, or the, the, the smaller the, the temperature gradient and the slower heat will transfer across that, that path. Okay, here's the equation. Let's plug in the numbers that we have. So for K, we have 397 joules per second times meters times centigrade degrees. The cross-sectional area, which is 200 square centimeters. And then, of course, we have to convert that to square meters because we want to use standard units here. So we have a meter squared, centimeters squared and one square meter is 10,000 square centimeters so we have a con good conversion there. The next is the difference in the temperature while well, the difference between 100 and 0 is 100 so that's times 100 centigrade degrees and we divide the whole thing by the length of the path 80 centimeters is 0 0.8 meters. Okay now let's see if we can cancel some things out so square centimeters we get rid of that, centigrade degrees, that cancels out, per meter and meters. Hmm, that would be meters squared. Uh, let's see here, but that, that would go in here, and that counts out the meters squared there. So this one cancels out those two meters, and we're left with joules per second. That's energy per unit time. So that, those are good units. So I need my calculator. Here it is, and let's find out what the amount of heat transfer is per unit time. So 397 times 200 divided by 10,000 multiply times 100 divided by 0.8 equals and what do we get here 992.5 so that's equal to 992.5 joules per second and of course joules per second is watts and so we can then convert that to about 1,000 watts so almost a thousand joules per second will travel along that copper bar if one side is kept at 100 degrees centigrade and the other side is kept at zero degrees centigrade. Of course, to do that, we probably want to pack this in an ice bath and we probably want to pack this in boiling water to keep that temperature constant so that the heat transfer will be constant like that. A more difficult problem would be, of course, is let's say we don't keep these objects at a constant temperature. We allow this temperature to go down, this temperature to go up, and then, of course, you can see that the heat transfer would not be constant. The heat transfer would, of course, diminish over time. Then we would have a dQ dt that would kind of look like this over time. And, of course, that's for the future. We're not going to worry about that yet. 
for a future video, perhaps, yes. But at least here you can see some basic idea of heat transfer via conduction, keep them at the same temperatures, the hot reservoir, the cold reservoir, so that heat is conducted over the path. This is the equation. We need to know the constant associated with the material, in this case it's copper, the cross-sectional area, the difference in the temperature, and the length of the bar. Plug in the numbers, and you get the heat transfer per unit time in terms of watts.